We feel like we're on an all-star team. We feel unstoppable, said Eagles running back Miles Sanders. Well, the last time something like that was said, it didn't go so well for those Eagles. But maybe he's still got a point. Feels like there's a portion of the media that's high on this Eagles team, but I think your average NFL fan would rate them much lower. So in this video, we're going to analyze the Eagles roster and talk about what the expectations should be for them this year. Now, when you're talking about this team, it has to begin with AJ Brown. That's the move that defined their offseason. They gave up their first and third round picks to get Brown, then proceeded to hand him the contract he once sought from the Titans. As a top 10 receiver in the league, Brown will draw the focus of the defense and still be extremely productive. Since he entered the league, he has more receiving yards per route run than everyone but Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson. At his best, he can be the reason why your team wins. Just go back and watch that game he had against the 49ers last year. The Titans won because the Niners straight up could not cover him. And now in Philly, I'm expecting this to help Devontae Smith big time. He had over 900 yards as a rookie and as the number one option. He should feel more space opening up in the secondary with Brown attacking the defense alongside him. That's why Brown said in June that he expects Smith to dominate this upcoming season. When you add along Quez Watkins breakout year and he's now their number three wide receiver, it's uh, looking like the Eagles may have a top five receiving core in the league. They went from a top four wide receiver chart looking like Smith, Watkins, Jalen Rager, and Greg Ward to Brown, Smith, Watkins, and Zach Paschal. Massive upgrades. Paschal, by the way, hit the 600-yard mark twice in four seasons with the Colts, so the depth is certainly there in case of injuries. Then we start to look at tight end, and Dallas Goddard is coming off his best year ever with over 800 yards. He has some insane top speed to his game, and he's one of the best run blockers at the position since he entered the league. You look up and down the receiving options, and this team will be incredibly hard to defend. We'll get to Jalen Hurts soon, but first I want to go over the best position on this team. When I look at offensive lines across the league, I think the Eagles and Browns are arguably in a tier of their own. You start at left tackle with Jordan Mailata, who in my opinion has one of the coolest stories in the NFL. He grew up in Australia playing rugby. The only experience he had in football was watching the Super Bowl once a year and watching the movie The Blind Side. NFL scouts find clips of him playing rugby online and invite him for a workout. So he comes in and is clearly an amazing athlete, but had so many flaws because he had never played a snap in his life. The Eagles take a flyer on him in the seventh round. He spends his first two years in the league without ever entering a game. Then in 2020, he gets his opportunity and showed some serious promise considering it was his first season playing football. And last year, he goes out and suddenly we're looking at a top five, could even argue top three tackle in the league. Based on his path so far, it really shouldn't surprise us if he's one day the best tackle in the NFL. And that day may be coming sooner rather than later. And let's not forget at right tackle, Lane Johnson was a second team all pro last year. So yeah, they've got two top 10 tackles in the league. Some Eagles fans would probably even say they're both top five. At center, even at 34 years old, Jason Kelsey is still top two in the league. Creed Humphrey is giving him a run for his money, but Kelsey has the bigger sample size. Last year, he had just one sack attributed to his name. He was top five at the position in run block win rate and top 10 in pass block win rate. There's more of a question as to how long he'll keep playing rather than how good he'll be in the future. He's a surefire Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion. He really has nothing left to prove. Guard is their weakest position on the line, and even then, it's still above average across the NFL. Now, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. This defense got picked apart by good quarterbacks last year, including a dismantling in the playoffs at the hands of Tom Brady. Luckily, they've made some notable additions to the unit, with Hassan Reddick bringing his double-digit sack totals. Brandon Graham will also return after missing almost all of last year. They desperately needed help on the pass rush, so that's just what the doctor ordered. James Bradbury is certainly capable of being a quality corner, 
and his pairing with Darius Slay should be a good one. They wanted to upgrade at safety, but didn't manage to do it. Still, they also went uh, defense heavy in the draft with Jordan Davis at pick 13. That dude is a gigantic freak athlete, and there's really no other way to describe him. Then N'Kobe Dean, who was a projected first rounder, fell down to the third because of injury concerns. He's apparently healthy, so that could end up being an absolute steal. Defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon was apparently getting some head coaching calls. I'm not his biggest fan, but I'm sure this defense can improve with the upgrades they've added. Moving on, I don't know if there's a more likable quarterback in the league than Jalen Hurts. This guy just seems like he's always doing the right thing and it's very genuine as well. Definitely an easy guy to root for. That being said, he's got a long way to go before he even sniffs elite status. He definitely needs to improve on his progressions and not staring down the receiver. Word out of OTAs is that he looked better in that regard, but it was still just OTAs. I just watched some of these throws from last year and it feels like he just stares down one guy constantly. It also feels like he needs to get the ball out like half a second faster but he just doesn't. That's something that's really tough to improve on, but hopefully with more time in the system and more talent surrounding him, he can then take that step forward. He's always got his legs to rely on. There's not many other quarterbacks in the league that can do what he can do on the ground. As we said before, he has the personality and leadership qualities that you dream of in a player. I don't see him regressing at all with the talent on offense, but if he really doesn't get much better in the passing game, then they might have to make the tough decision to look elsewhere in 2023. I think this is a make it or break it year for Hertz. They've put the right pieces around him and we need to see some results. Speaking of results, I think the Eagles have hopped the Cowboys and will win the division this year. They should be much more competitive in the NFC playoffs, and with a home playoff game, maybe they win that one, and hey, it's only a matter of getting hot at the right time, just like the Bengals did. I don't think they're quite at the level of the Rams or Bucks. Hertz would have to take a big jump for me to consider them at that level, but I think they'll be a playoff team with some questions, just like the 49ers or Packers. Now, I probably wouldn't rank them higher than those two, at least right now, but they belong in the conversation. The AFC is now way deeper than the NFC, so it really just takes an upset or two to find yourself in the conference championship or even Super Bowl. Big shout out to Howie Roseman for the roster he's put together, and I'm excited to see it in action this year.